Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media. Today we've got a brand new video, a video I haven't done, a style I did only once before, and we're gonna do it again and see how you guys like it. We're doing tier lists. We're doing tier lists, of course we are. And we are going through all of the Monster Cat LPs. So this isn't compilations, this isn't their big mainline compilations. This is Monster Cat individual artist LPs. Uh, we're gonna be going in chronological order. We got ourselves set up with all the classic tiers, S to F. Uh, and as a notion right off the bat, uh, if whatever album ends up in F, doesn't mean it's actually really, really bad. Um, this is a, whatever, it's a subjective list, but also F just, there, there needs to be some relations. So F just has to be the bottom. It, it's the it's the least of all of them. You can have a ton of really good songs, but one song has to be the worst of them all just because they just, it, just, it has to work that way. So just because it's at the bottom doesn't mean it's actually that bad. Uh, it just means that it is my, uh, my least favorite of the bunch. So uh, that's that. With that out of the way, let's hop into it. Uh, Haywire, twofold part one. And we are going in chronological order. Uh, I think I'm going to put this one. I'm I'm honestly teetering between S and A. A uh, fantastic project, kind of retconned out of Monster Cat history, but that's okay for the most part. I'm gonna go A. Uh, fantastic debut album uh, or like first LP on Monster Cat for an artist. It is phenomenal. The like the glitchiness, the just the everything that Haywire is and uh, was at the time is just absolutely fantastic. So huge, huge fan of Twofold Part One. As we move on to Varian, the Ancient and the Arcane. Uh, interesting one. This one had a lot more. It wasn't what I expected. Varian, who did a lot of. Um, like that uh, kind of gritty, more rocky style of like fusion of electronic. This was a little more house, a little more ethereal, a little more spiritual kind of stuff. And uh, honestly, it was pretty good. Um, this is an underrated project, I would say for sure. Uh, I loved how everything flowed together. It was it, it was great. So uh, I'm going to go B. I'm going to go B. Ancient of the Arcane, I'm going to go B from Varian. So. Uh, and then Fracta, Gaia, uh, Gaia from Fractal. I'm not personally the hugest like melodic dubstep guy. I know this was great for its time or whatever, but uh, it wasn't so impressive for me. The stuff I liked on this track or on this LP was the kind of non dubstep tracks like uh, Omni. Uh, I think I think Fireway was, but I like Fireway and and Omni quite a bit. So this one is solid, uh, but in in comparison to the rest of everything else. I'm gonna give it. Hmm, I'm gonna give it a C. And we're just going slightly down, slightly down. So it went a little bit, but uh, uh, LP number four. This is Nigel Good's Space Cadet. Man came, dropped one album, left, was never heard from again. Uh, Nigel Good's Space Cadet. Absolutely fantastic project. I loved it. I love the spacey themes. I am a huge Nigel Good supporter, supporter and fan. And that's going right up to S immediately. I, I don't know if that's a hot take at all, but I think Now's a Good is fantastic. Um, some of the best stuff. Um, yeah, I, I all the songs are, are fantastic. I use them in different stuff. Like Cloud Stepper and Nova, I use for a lot of my kind of background music. And then Disappear and... Uh, oh, what's the... I can't even the other name of the song, but... Uh, though like the more saxophones ones yeah and then it, all the space i love it i love it i love it, love it. up next is grab it's better with time uh, an album i really really enjoyed uh it was kind of strange that what the here with me now ep was or friends ep uh and this was pretty much the same length but this was an album and the ones was not but that's besides the point uh better with time i was a fan Big fan. I, I really like Rabbits a lot. Uh, is it some of the toppest? Is it is the same tier as as Nigel Good? I don't think so. Same tier as Haywire to full part one. I don't think so either. But I am gonna put it in B. Uh, I am gonna organize it a little bit. I do like it a little bit more than Varian, so we will plop it. Uh, I guess right there um, in the first of uh, of B to some extent. So uh, as we move on to Haywire's twofold part two, the number two uh, of the twofold uh, <laughs> saga. I don't even know what you want to call it. Uh, it's Ness. It's Ness. It's my favorite Monster Cat LP, uh, no cap. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the funkiness, the even the house tracks, like, oh man, Do You, Don't You is insane. The way the whole thing mirrors itself of it's uh, as one of the other, I am me, I am you. The, um, I can't even remember the names of the other songs, but they, they transient and, uh, yeah, they how they all go back and forth. The whole track list mirrors itself. Brilliant. Loved it, loved it, loved it. 
Uh, moved on to Karma Fields New Age Dark Age. Uh, I this is an interesting one because Karma Fields was not as well received off the bat. Uh, it was a little too experimental for the Monster Cat community at the time, I would say. But uh, looking back retrospectively, uh, we have the power of retrospect now. Uh, fantastic! Oh my gosh, this thing was was top notch. Um, just what it was able to do for its time and. Yeah, I don't know. The sounds were so unique. I, I'm still struggling to find artists like this nowadays that have this this style, this sound, this everything. So, uh, Karma Fields, New Age, Dark Age, going in A. I think it's going to be uh, ahead of, honestly, Twofold Part 1, in my opinion. But And uh, if you didn't notice already, we are actually doing all the kind of semi, like the deluxe versions of albums, kind of. Uh, so, this is the New Age, Dark Age, Deluxe. Uh, so we are doing that like we're doing the Butterfly Effects Acoustics and the uh, um, Deluxe as well and the, the Light Remixes. So anything that's kind of like a Monster Cat LP is technically going to be on here. So uh, New Age Dark Age Deluxe, uh, it, like it added some great songs. Um, it was, I mean, it is Deluxe. So it's <laughs> it's it just pretty much added all the piano ballads on the back half. Uh, and then what the uh, the, what was it, the plus song? Uh, I can't remember, Skylines Plus? Oh, no. I can't remember. Whatever. Uh, but not much changed, uh, so I am just going to put it in B. Uh, I really enjoyed it, uh, but uh, it just doesn't flow as well as an album. It's like, yeah, it's whatever. Uh, toot Toot Child, To Come To An End, Then Stop. Uh, the kind of weird named album. This one was a weird one. Uh, very, very different than anything else in this whole list. Um, there is not that much like it really in in anything else on monster cat it had like that rock element to it that was like somewhat like very in old days but it also went and did some stuff totally different with lots of breaks and so it was a little all over the place but uh very underrated i would say criminally underrated uh, i am gonna put it uh in b uh laszlo uh liftoff so <laughs> I might, uh, I might lose some people here, uh, and here's why. Uh, I love Laszlo. Love Laszlo. Love him, love him, love him. Uh, the, <laughs> the Closer EP is one of my favorite EPs of all time. That being said, I wasn't on fire for the Liftoff EP. Or uh, um, LP. I don't know what it was. I don't know why, if, if I was just in a different time, headspace for music listening, I wasn't on fire for it. I enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was actually out of this world. So this is probably going to be my most, my hottest take of anything on here. Uh, Laszlo is going to go and see. So I don't know. Nothing, none of the tracks really stood out to me. I liked his other styles a little bit more. So yeah, that is, uh, that, that's that. As we move on to uh, <laughs> Infected Mushroom, uh, the two Amish boys and the head of NASA, the head of NASA and the two Amish boys. I'm not the hugest Infected Mushroom fan, uh, but I did appreciate some of the tracks from this project. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a side trance guy. I, I don't particularly relate to Infected Mushroom. I do think this is probably their better album of the two, but uh, I'm going to put this one in... I'm going to put this in C. I respect it. I respect it for what it does. Even though it's not my flavor, I do... I, I respect it, so... Lots of stuff up here. Lots of stuff high on the list. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. As we've got Kill Paris Galaxies Within Us up next. Uh, this one had some real gems in it. Also some real duds, I think. It was kind of a little all over the place. Uh, it was really cool stylistically. I really did enjoy the just weirdness of it. Like It was just like an acid trip the whole time, pretty much. Uh, but... I am, yeah. See, I, I'm loving, I'm loving the C right now. I'm loving C. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna put it in C. I think this one, I think I like this more than the general public. I think this will be lower than most people's on average. Uh, but uh, I like it. I, I did like it more. See, uh, yeah, I did like it. I liked it more than Infected Mushroom, but uh, not as much as Laszlo. So, Silent, uh, we are dust. Uh, the album, uh, pretty much that uh, has expanded far beyond anything. In the EDM world, I should say, uh, is one that's had the furthest reach. Um, I would say Zylent also, like Nigel Good, came and just dropped an album and left and uh, heck, got the heck out of Dodge. So, actually, that's not true. Uh, came and did uh, the song with Raziel uh, early on uh, and then uh, Edge of the World. So, okay, it's not, not entirely true, but uh, it's an S. Uh, it's an S. I uh, I didn't love it on release. I wasn't the hugest fan of it. Uh, similar to Laszlo, I was in kind of a different headspace. But uh, I went back recently. Actually, I think this past year, 
and people had said they loved it. Actually, it was from the boat voting, the community boat. Um, I, people like had it, like all the songs were like very top at number one and like number four for a while. And I was like, what the heck? You guys love this so much. And so I went through and really did a deep dive and I was like, okay, okay. I, I really appreciate this now. I think this is actually phenomenal. I just missed it at the time. So I, I can recognize that I missed it. So up next, Shock One, A Dark Machine. I'm trying to think about this one. Yeah, this one is a little, I enjoyed this one. In all its bits and pieces, it had some songs I really enjoyed, some songs I really didn't enjoy. I liked the style of it all. The atmosphere of it was, was really nice. All these songs, like, I love when albums just have a, a coherent kind of theme or atmosphere throughout. And this song, I think this album did a good job of that. I don't know. I'm a tough on this one. I, I think this one could be an A on any given day and an E on any given day. So I don't know where I'd want to put this. I think I am going to slot it in with C. Uh, but I think I'm going to put it on the top of C, honestly. Uh, something about it, I don't know. I just, I I really liked Dark Machine. Th- yeah. I, if I listen to the songs that I just, from the Dark Machine, that I really liked, like Silver and Gold and Bleed Black, I or, like it a lot. So I, we'll, we'll put it there and see. Uh, <laughs> Riot, Dogma, Resistance, the big dubstep album, bro step album. Uh, people were upset about this because all the songs got released earlier, like all the singles and not many songs came out when it actually got released. And I'm not the hugest fan of having that sentiment because it's an album. Like you just gotta listen to the album all the way through and have your thoughts on it in that sense. But, uh, yeah, Riot's, uh, Dogma Resistance. It's good. Is it fantastic? I mean, Overkill is so good. And take that, the bonus track, huge fan of, but is it the best thing in the world? I don't know. Maybe not for me. I enjoyed it, but uh, I'm going to put it at the end of B. End of B. So Dogma Resistance was good, but uh, Overkill, I think, really carried it. Uh, and Jungle Fury was great, too. I didn't didn't mind the other tracks too much. I didn't take that. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to go in order here, uh, but uh, from original. But Butterfly Effect. Coven, the album that got three albums. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed Butterfly Effect. I really did. Uh, the whole album front to back, I thoroughly enjoyed. I love Katie's vocals. Uh, what Max's production, like it was two worked really well together. I was a huge fan. I wasn't a fan of the way that they did double-sided singles, but in the end, it was the album was the album. And uh, Gold was my favorite song of that year. And uh, in the intro, you know, it was one of my favorite outro tracks. But uh, yeah, so this one is solid. Uh, I'm going to put this in uh, high B tier, high B tier. I was a huge fan of Butterfly Effect. But let's go to Butterfly Effect Deluxe, the one that came out right after. It had a few more songs, um, a lot of remixes. It was pretty much a huge project, a huge thing in the end. Uh, And I'm going to rate these primarily by how I thought of the remixes or the additions to it. And uh, it just wasn't anything crazy to me. So I actually am going to put the deluxe, uh, in, in D, um, just because I didn't, I didn't love any of the deluxe songs. Like I didn't think any of them were actually that great. Even that one single that came off of it. I was like, meh. Uh, and then the acoustics, uh, I actually really like the acoustics. Um, yeah, I know some of you guys did, you guys were just upset that there was three versions of this album and I get that, but, uh, because it's an acoustic stuff, it's the LP and it's just acoustics. I'm not the hugest fan of the acoustics, even though they were good. I am going to put it in E. I don't think it's horrible. I just think it wasn't. Yeah. If, if it's album by itself, it's probably just E. So I, that's just me. Uh, Infected Mushroom, more than just a name or more of just the same, one of the two. I can't remember exactly, but uh, I said this earlier. I didn't like it as much as uh, Head of Ness and Two Amish Boys, so I am going to put this uh, at D. Pretty close, though, so I'll, I'll put it right right here, technically right behind um, their first album. So not it again, I, I would repeat the same things I said. Not a huge fan of Side Trance, but uh, I can appreciate it at least a little bit. Uh, Conroe's Therapy, uh, the first album I did a review or anything I talked about really on this channel. Uh, I love Conroe. The future based stuff is fantastic. The house stuff is fantastic. Therapy, although carried this album, I think. I wasn't a huge fan of a ton of the tracks here. I thought this was some of his weakest, like the, the, the cuts in between, not the, the non-singles were some of his weakest stuff. So I'm going to put this, uh, I think, uh, just here and see. So I enjoyed it, but uh, I think the singles really, really did carry. So, Muzz, The Promised Land, the album that finally came out. Uh, people were waiting for Muzz albums for forever, uh, and this one finally came out. I think this is, I, I'm a huge fan of Muzz. I like what he does. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think about where to put this. I think I'm going to put it top of B. 
I, I, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. Uh, but it's, it's personally, uh, I, I don't go back to it as much as I have the, the five albums ahead of it. So I, uh, I'm going to put it at B good, 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 but yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. Uh, the city of Oz, Justin. Oh, uh, I would say similar to Karma Fields where it was a little more experimental with its storyline. This one had a really clear cut storyline all throughout. I really appreciate it for that. Uh, I love visual art and so, or the visual video art media. And so tons of music videos around it. I love the storyline. I actually really liked a lot of the tracks, um, except for the, uh, she's a killer part two. I wasn't a huge fan on that one, but, uh, this one's actually a, this one's a for me. Uh, it really is. I, I really, really did like the city of Oz. Uh, that one grew on me over time and it just got better and better and better and hasn't really gone and gone down since. So that's that. As we go to Vice Stone Legacy. Vendata. No, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, Vice Tone, I think, has gone downhill a lot. Uh, and I just did not like their commercial house approach to it. Their signature synth sound, I think, is really annoying. Personally, I just wasn't, it just, none of these chords hit for me at all. Animal was the only song I actually enjoyed in any sense, honestly. And uh, the rest of it, I thought, was pretty not great commercial house. So that's, that's, that's just me. That's just me. Okay, but now going on to uh, Vendetta, Vendetta with Open Dyes. Uh, solid one. Uh, I really love the kind of R&B influences throughout this thing. Uh, lots of deep house cuts here. Um, another just great job with the, the, the thematics of the project all throughout. So this is a solid one. Uh, where do I want to put this, though? It's uh, it's solid, but I, it's nothing I haven't really gone back to a whole ton. So I'm going to put this in just behind Laszlo. So that's with open dies. Uh, Shingo Nakamura Glow, the uh, <laughs> the first Silk LP that was actually since Monster Cap. Uh, I'm not the hugest Silk guy. The Progressive House stuff is not my jam for the most part. And so I didn't find it really too interesting one way or another. Uh, Glow was the best song by far. So it's just going to go in D. So uh, Vintage and Morelli and Ariel Marin, uh, The Light. Um, the original, I have the remix in here, which we'll talk about after, but, uh, the original, uh, I liked more than Shingo Nakamura's Glow, uh, but not too much more. Again, still not a huge fan of the Progressive House. I know there's some more trance in here. Uh, I think the vocals really did carry this project a little bit more, uh, than something like Glow did, but, uh, yeah, so we're gonna put this, uh, we're gonna put this in a little bit higher in D. And then, uh, the light remixes, I technically have it on here, it's like... Is it really an LP? Is it not? It's only like a couple songs, but uh, I'm going to put it in here just for the sake of it is technically an LP. And if we're going in the realm of deluxe and whatever, it's here. So uh, really actually wasn't a huge fan of these remixes at all. I actually really liked all the originals way more. Uh, so I'm going to put this one at the end of E. So uh, Tasaki, uh, 01953, the area code, I believe where he lives. Uh, I was a... I did not like this album. I did not like this album. You guys seem to really enjoy it, or at least more so than I did. I found myself in the community being someone that was the most outspoken against not enjoying it. I kind of get his kind of wonky trap style, but it just wasn't for me. It felt really, I don't know. It just felt like it was trying too hard to be something that it wasn't. And so I just, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Uh, I'm putting it, honestly, uh, the top of E, top of E. So sorry, Saki. I, I wasn't a huge fan. Wasn't a huge fan. Uh, Vichy, Californian Dreams. Uh, I like this more. This is my favorite glow or my favorite Silk uh, EP or LP. Uh, it really didn't do a whole ton. Actually, no. Is it the same? It's right next to the light. It's pretty close. I'm not sure where it is exactly. Uh, I just felt like it was ultimately really forgettable. Um, so, you know, I'm backtracking immediately from what I said. I, this is not my favorite Silk LP. This is my least favorite Silk LP. I gave it a second to really think about it. My least favorite. Uh, so it's going right behind Glow. Tony Romero, Introspection, the House LP, uh, one of the more recent ones to come out. I wasn't hugely overly impressed with the stuff. I like the sounds, but uh, there was really no standout tracks for me individually. Uh, Party on My Own was my favorite, uh, but really nothing else really stood out. So it was a good, like, consistent album, but wasn't anything that really blew me away. So I'm going to put this one... I think I'm going to put it lower back. I think it's, like, first of D. I think it's first of D for me, so... Uh, <laughs> slushy extinction level event. Uh, we really like to meme on this album for being bad. 
to some extent, a lot of people in the community did not like it. And uh, I am one of those people as well. So I did not like it. We're putting it in F. It is my least favorite Monster Cat LP. Um, I don't know. I just, something about it all just was not working for me. The <laughs> Some of the dubstep drops were so weird. Uh, and oh my gosh, Secrets was, it, yeah. And it did not have a thematic flow anywhere else. The narrative was totally off. It didn't know what it wanted to be. So that's, it's there. Uh, and then finally, ending off with the most recent one, the X Saga from Muzz. I don't know why this album is an album. I feel like it's a, like a compilation of sorts. It's weird. It is an album. It isn't an album. It has originals, but they're actually just VIPs. And then there's remixes. And it's just a weird project to like really call an LP. Um, but I wasn't really blown away with this. This was pretty basic. A lot of it was all over the place. So uh, I'm going to put this... Uh, I actually really, I haven't listened to anything since I did the listening party, I think, from this. So I actually might be putting it uh, low. I'm going to put it at the end of D. End of D, I think. So, uh, But that's that. Let me know what you think. That is my final Monster Cut LP tier list. Uh, what do you agree with? What do you disagree with? I'd love to know in the comment section below. Uh, but with that, I've been Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.